Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Today, I'm going to show you how to let your users change the row height in a Microsoft Access continuous form. This one's been on my list for a while. Nancy from Bremerton, Washington, a Platinum member, writes, Is there a way to allow my users to change the height of the rows in a continuous form? Some of my users like them small so they can see more records. Others like them bigger so they can see more info in each field, especially for long text fields. I tried using a split form, but they don't seem to hold their properties. And then earlier today, another one of my students posted this in the forums, Deborah, and she has this is what she posted, and she tried using a split form. Now, I don't like split forms. Split forms are kind of like working with tables or queries, whereas if you change the properties in here, they don't always stick. The row height, the column widths, I don't like using split forms. So what I like using are continuous forms because in the continuous form, you set all the properties, you can set the colors, the heights, the widths, the whatever, and you could change them with a little bit of code. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. Now, this is gonna be a developer level video. So if you've never done any programming before in Microsoft Access, go watch this first. It's my intro to VBA class, about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know. Go watch this and come on back. All right, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. And let's say we got our customer list. Now, I'm going to simplify this real quick just for the purposes of class. I am going to delete these. Yeah, actually, let's delete all these guys here. And I'm going to add notes in here so we have a long text field too. So I'm just going to copy last name, slide it over here. All right, and we're going to change this guy to notes. So here notes and change the name to notes okay so that's a long text field all right you can see some of that you can't see all the stuff so what some users want to do is they want small or short rows so you can see more records some people want these to be taller so they could see more information in these long text fields and we want to be able to give the user the ability to do that now the easiest way to do that is you just give them two little buttons little button that says make the row taller make the row shorter that's all that's really easy to do now before we do that, we got to figure out how big, how tall this row is right now. So I'm going to grab another button. I'm going to put it right here. Cancel the wizard. All right, and I'm just going to put in here how tall. All right, we're going to see how tall this is. I'm going to leave these in here. All right. And let's make these buttons the same size. That, that bothers me. Okay, this will be the how tall button. How tall BTN. All right, right click, build event. Now what I'm looking for is the height property for any of these text boxes, okay? So I'm gonna message box, let's just look at first name. First name dot height. That is the height property of the first name box. Okay, save it, close it, open it. Let's click our how tall button. Boom, I get 315. What is 315? Well, 315 is the number of twips in size that that object is, all the, all the objects in here are measured in twips. It's a screen independent size, it's 20th, 1 20th of a point. I got a whole separate video on the technical details and how to convert from twips to pixels and all that stuff. All you gotta know is that height is 315. 315 what? I don't know, call them oranges, whatever. All right, 315 units tall. So, now that I know that, I can say, well, okay, if I make the little button to go bigger, how much bigger should we go? Maybe 20, 20 more twips, right? Maybe 30, I don't know. You can use whatever, you, whatever, however big you want, all right? Or you can just make two buttons, one to go big, one to go small. But I'm gonna make little buttons to go bigger and smaller. So design view, let's just copy this button, copy paste, and let's call this one big, make it bigger. Or let's go tall, tall. Okay, BTN tall. All right, let me make this a little smaller. There we go. All right, right click, build event. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to make all of the boxes in the details section get taller. And how are we going to do that? Well, start with customer ID dot height equals customer ID dot height plus how much bigger do you want to make it? Let's go with 20. 20 is a good, nice round number. Okay, copy that and paste it. Of course, we got four of them. And then just put each field in here, right? We got first name. We got last name. 
we got notes okay and what you could actually do is you could do this watch you could just change this and say er, er, er. look at that because they're all gonna be the same size right customer id dot height is gonna get 20 bigger and then make these guys all equal to his height that's the easiest way to do it okay save it all right close it open it and click your button ready tall tall oh look at that look at that it's getting 20 twips bigger every time i click on it okay now you can see you can see more information over here that's kind of cool huh all right let's go the other way back to design view let's copy this button here All right, let's make this short. Let's make this get shorter. Okay, button short. ETN short. Do a little bit of that. Right click, build event. Okay, basically the same thing. Copy all this. Paste it up here. And we're going to go minus 20. We're going to put a safeguard in this one, though. We don't want to get too small. We're going to say if customer ID dot height is less than we started off at 315, right? Let's say we don't want to get any smaller than 300. If it's less than 300, then exit sub. All right. Because if you get if you go below too small, you get like below one, it'll pop an error up. OK. All right. So save that. Or you can just put 315 in here and not let them get any smaller than the original. All right. Ready? Bigger. Smaller. Oh, look at that. Oh, wait, what's happening though? I can get bigger, but then when I get smaller, the detail section isn't shrinking. Now, remember, there is a can grow, can shrink for all of these objects, right? In forms, but they don't work when you're looking at the form on the screen. They're only for when you print forms, and we don't print forms, we print reports. So, can grow, can shrink in a form is pretty much useless. But we can manually make that height smaller, shorter. Okay, how do we do that? Well, back to design view again. Go back to our code. All right, right in here we're making it smaller. What we're going to do is we're going to make the detail section the same height as those controls. So how do we do that? Well, it's going to be me dot section zero dot height equals customer ID dot height. All right, me dot section zero is another name for the detail section. Yeah, there's a there's an access constant for it too. You can put in here, uh, what is it? The AC detail, I think it is. But I just always remember it's zero. If you look on Microsoft's website, there's detail header, footer, page header, page for that kind of stuff. But I just, zero works fine. I'll put a link to that page down below for you. Well, let's see how it works. Save it, close it, open it, ready, get bigger, get smaller. Ooh, ah, look at that. We Now, if you want to save this per user, you could set up a user table, right? You got, I've got other videos on how to do a user logon. All right, go watch this video, teach you how to know what users logged on to the database. Once you got that, you can either store their preferences on a local table, or you could set up a system defaults table and also put user preferences in there. That's up to you. If you want to get crazy, you could throw a little font change in here too. Let's say you want to leave this guy so that it stays with the small fonts so you can see more, but maybe these, these boxes here, you want to make the font get bigger and smaller. Let's see. Let's go back into here, design view. And this takes a little finessing. So if your default font, let's see, is 11 then maybe every time you go up, make the font a little bit bigger. Let's just test it with first name. So first name dot font size equals, we'll go plus one. And then up here, you don't want to go too small again. So what I'll do is I'll say if first name dot font size is less than 11, then exit sub. Don't go any further. Uh, but we can then say do this and go minus one. Let's see if this works. I haven't tried this yet. I'm just off the top of my head in this one. <laughs> All right, let's see what we get. get. A little bigger. Okay, look at that. See? Yeah. A little smaller. All right. A little bigger. 
a little smaller. Not bad. And just do the same thing with both of those fields. All right. So you got first name and last name getting bigger. While this one stays the same. Pretty cool. Pretty nifty. Lots of stuff you could do with this with access people. That's why I love access so much. It's so versatile. Once you learn a little bit of programming, it's, it's yeah, all kinds of stuff you can do. Now, before everybody asks in the comments, no, you cannot have multiple different heights for different rows. You can't say make this one taller, this one shorter. Can't do it. It's one of the limitations of access. I have no control over that. I've tried numerous different techniques to change that. Can't be done. That's a, just a, one of the, there's very few things that access can't do. That's one of them. So note to the access team, maybe, I don't know. It shouldn't be too hard for you guys to do. Now, one thing that you can do if you're interested just in reading this information, okay, you don't necessarily want to edit it, but you want to be able to read it. Uh, I had another student ask me, and it's, it, this is coming up in tomorrow's video, uh, if you could take something like the contacts form here and have it so you can read all of these without having to open up each one to look at it, right? Because there's a lot in this box here. You want to be able to just see these. Yes, you can do that with an embedded report inside a form. And that will be the topic of tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Will the boy wonder get an... No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Okay, but yeah, it'll, it'll be cool. You'll like this one. But there you go. There's today's tech help video. I hope you learned something, folks. Hope you had some fun doing it. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no I didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one level two is just a dollar that's it one dollar and that's another whole like 90 minute course Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay. Want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month 
and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.